So today for the 10 Factor, episode 27, we have guest Greg Walker, author of Dream to Go Rich, How to Dream, Grind, and Hustle Your Way to Success. Hey, hey, it's Tim Michael. Welcome to The 10 Factor, where entrepreneurs learn how to use their expertise to build and scale a thriving business. After 12 years in corporate management and then another 10 as an entrepreneur, I got tired of living week to week, so I made a change. Obsessed with the ins and outs of a successful business, I honed my expertise, I talked to a ton of successful entrepreneurs, I designed a roadmap, I started a podcast, and I wrote a book. Put it all together, and you have the 10 factor. Now, sit back, relax, turn on your ears, and take away some awesome value. Ready, set, go. So for the last month or so, you've been listening to me talk about finishing out 2017, building massive momentum so we can get our way into 2018 and hit it strong, hit it hard, hit it fast, make this your best year ever. You've heard me talk a lot about now matters. We've talked about facing fear. We've talked about overcoming fear of the video camera. And we've just talked about taking action, implementing, and getting things done and, and let me tell you, I have just surrounded myself with a tremendous group of people who are super motivated, want to make a difference in other people's lives, and nobody better that I can think to bring on to start off 2018 than Greg Walker. He is a true inspiration, and Greg, welcome to the 10 Factor. Oh, thank you for having me, brother. It's such a privilege to be on here. So what I'd like to do is, before we get started, why don't we take two minutes and just give a, a quick intro to my listeners and, and just so you know what, what I deal with. Basically, we're talking to entrepreneurs or somebody that thinks they want to be an entrepreneur. They're getting ready to leave the corporate world and go out on their own, maybe as a consultant or as a small business owner. And they just can't seem to get over the hump. And they're, they're looking for that, that magic formula or that secret or, or what can they do to get to the next level? And really, they're after one thing. They want to live life, a successful life, on their own terms. They don't want to be married to their job, and they want to help and impact other people. So that, that's who you're talking to. I also have some listeners that aren't entrepreneurs that just listen to my podcast to try to get motivation. We, we try to help people in just in life in general because there is such a synergy between life and business. And really, I feel like they overlap and they're one and the same. And, and that's how I teach my people. And that's the people that are attracted to me. So go ahead, Greg. Well, I tell anybody, if, they, if they can't, they're, I don't believe in being stuck. I don't believe in a hump. I believe either you're moving or you're standing still. Either you're jumping or you're thinking about jumping. And those who think end up in a hearse at a certain age and they never write that book. They never get that college degree. They never ask that guy or girl out. So I'm a true believer of taking risk because I'd rather take a risk and fail than to be 67 years old on a rocking chair on a retirement home. And I see kids playing and I stop and a tear rolls down my eye because I realized I never took a chance at living my dreams. I was always called the big dreamer because I'm one of 15 children. Uh, no one ever made it out of the ninth grade. No one ever graduated. I became the first person. People said, you think you're going to be the first person? Yes, I was asked to drop out my very first day because of my family life. And a teacher saved me. People said, what, you're going to open up a business? Yes. Well, you're going to be a millionaire before age 28? Yes. What, you're going to open up hundreds of businesses? Yes, I helped open 270 taco franchises. And I own multiple Subway restaurants to this day. I retired thir at 39, 12 years ago from the day-to-day -day operations. We still have businesses, but I just work, I just got out of bed at 1130 this morning. 
on the 26th because I chose my life. I believe in taking risks. The greatest people take risks. Now, there's calculated risk. If I was a truck driver and I was never in the restaurant business, that's not a calculated risk, that trucking job, right? But if you're a dishwasher at a Wendy's and you want to open up a taco stand, you're in that environment, so you should do that. So I tell people, just show up in life. Just do what you want to do. You know, keep your job, even if you hate it. Try to save. Get with someone who's, if you want to learn how to open up a business, you can come talk to me. If you want to learn how to be a speaker, you can come talk to me because I've done those things. I believe if you want to be a swimmer, all you have to do is go to the local pool and ask the lifeguard, hey, can you teach me how to swim? Success is very, very easy. It's the process. You know, my, in my book, Dream to Grow Rich, I talk about how I slept in my first restaurant for four years, only leaving an hour a day to go home and shower and see my newborn baby girl who's now 30 years old. I slept in my business seven days a week, four weeks out of the month, 12 months out of the year for four years because that's how bad I want it. People ask me, well, how, how do I tell if I want it bad enough? Well, I just lost part of my foot, 51% of my foot because I was speaking in the World Championship Public Speaking in Vancouver, Canada for Toastmasters. I'm the first guy from Columbus, Ohio in 90 years to represent Ohio, right? I got a foot ulcer because I'm a lifelong diabetic. And I was walking eight miles a day. I didn't look at my feet. I felt it. I got an ulcer. It got very bad. And uh, my foot doctor said, I can't let you go. What if we have to do an amputation? I said, well, you know me, doc. You know what I'm going to do. I said, we'll deal with that when it comes time, right? And that was in July. I went. I competed. Now I'm one of the top 100 speakers in the world by Toastmasters International. And I lost part of my foot. People ask me all the time, would you do it again? Absolutely, yes. I'd rather lose part of my foot. And when I die, I can say, you know what? I'm not going to be crying on that rocking chair on that retirement center. I'm going to say, I wrote my best-selling book. I opened my restaurants. I became an international, a world-renowned speaker. Been married to my wife for 30 years now. Wonderful kid, wonderful niece and nephews. I've lived my life. I tell people, would I do it differently? Yes. Because when my foot got bad in Vancouver in August when I spoke, I would have took time off. But I kept speaking in New York, Detroit, other places. My foot just kept getting inflamed. But yes, I made that ultimate sacrifice. So I ask people, are you willing to sacrifice who you are for who you want to become? Most people will not show up for a job interview because they get a hangnail. Right? My foot got amputated because I kept walking on it. So the, how bad do you want it in life? That's the question. How bad do you want it? Do you kind of want it or do you really want it? Yeah. And you know, what you say is, is so true because, you know, obviously we're sorry to hear about your foot, but the way that you take that and the perspective you apply to it, I think anybody can learn from that. It's, it's just a function of, you know, living your life with like, like you said, would I do things differently? Absolutely. Yes. Would I, do I regret what I did? Absolutely not. Because everything you do along the way is what makes you who you are today. And I think that That's speaks right. to everybody, whether it's a, a medical issue like a foot, whether it's a loss of a loved one through a tragic accident or through an illness, whether it's getting fired from your job, it doesn't matter. Things happen and that's life. It's what you do moving forward that's so important. And, and I guess when Sean Wyman told me I needed to get in touch with you, and Sean, matter of fact, Sean and I just did a training on Friday because he is, I don't know if you know this or not, but he, he talked to me a month or so ago and he said, Hey, Tim, I, I got a problem here. I can't reach enough people. I'm, I'm trying to reach so many people and I'm getting bogged down in the details. He still has his full-time job. He's mm -hmm. trying to As a police officer. Yep. He, he's, you know, and, and he's impacting thousands of people, but it's not enough. And so, so him and I went through a, a value prop training a couple weeks ago and, and went through his podcast or through my podcast episode on value propositions. And then him and I dialed through his to try to get it tighter and get it more so he can get out there and just hit more people. Mm -hmm. So then he, he said, you know what, let's do this. We went on Facebook Friday and we did a training. We read through script word by word to try to teach other people, you know, that process, even somebody here who's a, a best selling author, a professional speaker still working to get better to impact more people. It never right. stops. You have to keep pushing forward. So what you say just really resonates with anybody that listens to my show because 
everybody here is, we're, we're trying to grow. We're not the type of people, we want to be in the, the 5% that isn't complaining. We, want, we move forward. Instead of making That's excuses, right. you just, you go ahead. You know, people ask, me, people ask me, how can I be so positive after losing 51% of my, my left foot? And I say this because someone doesn't have a foot. Right. And how can I complain about I have a foot and a half? I can walk out and get a prosthetic, sweet Nike shoe, right, with inserts, you know, with a cast around my foot. Uh, but someone's dying of cancer right now. I have a buddy who's totally healthy, PhD, and he's dying of stage four lymphoma, right? Might have eight months to live or something like that. And he's happy, right? He's going through more than what I'm going through. And that's what, why does it take for someone to get cancer? Or for two planes to fly into buildings in New York City before they finally say, you know what, life is pretty good. Look at all those people on Wall Street that complained about only having a Ferrari and not a Bugatti. But after everyone died in their company in 9-11, now they went back to farming back in Iowa. I, I, I never wanted to get that way. I always wanted to be appreciative for what I have right now. And most Americans always look at things, with the, things they don't have and say, look at what they have. You look around you. I can breathe on my own. I can see, I can walk, I can touch. I can open my car door, my door with a key, right? I can smell cookies when my wife's baking them. Someone in this world cannot do those simple things. It's all perspective, really. It's all. It, it, it really is. You know, it's funny, when I, when I was putting together the 10 factor, there, there's, there's 10 steps. And, and step 10 is, is absolutely N, which is never forget. Never forget where you came from and, and right. always give back. And I feel like in my system, you, you're not a success until you, you hit step 10. You, you can go all the way through step nine, but step 10 is really what defines you as a person. Whether you want to be memorable, whether you want to help others, whatever you want to be, you, you have to do that. And I, heard a guy, I heard a guy complain about his junky car one time in a Walmart, and I reached him to, and I said, someone's walking. I said, someone's walking. And he looked at me, thought, and he said, Wow. I never thought about that. I said, someone's walking this world. <laughs> you know, it's funny. One of the things I always talk about it is one of, one of my, I have, I have two, two things that I do every day. One is I try to break a sweat. And the second one is I pick somebody random that I've never seen before. And I say <laughs> hi to them. And, and it's amazing. I do get shot down sometimes. <laughs> you get that, that sideways. Oh, yeah. look. But it's amazing the conversations you strike up and, and it can be, you know, the guy sitting on the bench outside of the restaurant. It can, it can be the, the lady right. who got the screaming kid. It, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's, Hey, well, it Tim, with do, that. do this, do this. My nieces, they hate to hear this because it makes people smile all the time. When someone asks you how you're doing, say, I'm blessed to see your face. Say, I'm blessed to hear your voice. I've never had anybody say, wow, <laughs> that's pretty stupid. They don't say that. They, when someone just called me and they said, hey, how are you doing, Mr. Walker? I'm blessed to hear your voice. They're like, wow, I'm, that's so nice of you. People just, they're amazed. It, it makes them feel, we all want to feel special, right? So when people ask me how I'm doing, I say I'm doing phenomenal. They say, why? Because I'm alive. And I say, I'm blessed to see your face. Why? Because someone's closing their eyes right now. They're closing their eyes. They're not going to see anything ever again. So I say that to everyone I see and I hear. Because that's the truth. It, it, it really is. And you never know who's, who's that person that's, that's getting yeah. ready to, to end their life or whatever it is. And that just that high is enough. I just spoke in New York City where they treated me and uh, my niece like kings and queens for five days um, at an Asian real estate conference. And uh, that's how I got – that's how they brought me there. They heard me speak to someone. They liked that, uh, how I was speaking. They liked how I was compassionate. They liked how I had passion when I speak because I'm not the boring old white dude in a suit. I don't wear suits, as Sean would tell you. I wear my ball cap, my shorts, and my dream grind hustle or dream like boss shirt because that's who I am. You know, I turned down $10,000 one time and people said, did you really turn that down? I said, yes, I did because I don't conform to people. I don't. Why should I? I retired at 39. I don't need to conform to anybody. And uh, they called me back two weeks later and said, hey, we saw your thing. Uh, you're a testimonial from Les Brown, from the guy who has a $200 million company. We'll bring you back, and we're going to pay you your $15,000 fee. I said, my fee is only $10,000. They said, we talked to your manager, and she said it's $15,000. Well, my manager is my wife. 
And she says, if they're going to deny you, the fee just went up. And they paid my 15 grand. There you speak. Go. It's not about the dress. It's not about how you look. Right? I mean, I don't know what your beliefs are, but I'm a Christian. I don't believe Jesus would come here with a Rolex watch on. But people would listen, right? A lot of people, a little old attorney named Gandhi changed the world, and he wasn't dressed nice. Mother Teresa, who gave her, I'm not Catholic, but Mother Teresa, who served billions of poor people, she changed the world, and she wasn't dressed that nice. So I tell people, if you wear a suit and you love wearing a suit, God bless you. But if you don't, why? Because I believe people will see you through, see through that. Now, I did wear a suit when I spoke for the World Championship, but I wore my matching Big Dreamer black hat and my black and red Nike shoes to match my black and red suit that Les Brown wanted me to wear. So I was still myself. And a little old white lady came up to me. And this is how I could tell I was on the right track of my life. Because it's usually little old white ladies that don't like stuff like that. So this lady came up to me. She says, son, I don't like hats with suits, and I don't like tennis shoes with suits. And I just thought, please, please, Lord, please don't let me shout her down. And she looked at me and my niece as my best friend, Mark, who was there with me. She says, but there's something about you that looks nice with that suit and that hat and those shoes on. She said, so you keep wearing that. I got on the phone and told my wife, said, now I know. Because if she tells me that, because usually they're the ones who curse me down. Mm-hmm. And I was the first person to get a standing ovation. And the, and the new president from India named Baraj was there. And he says, young man, I've never seen anybody get a standing ovation like that. And he says, I like your hat. I like your shoes. Now, when I didn't make it to the finals in Vancouver, some people said it was because there's judges all over the world. And some of the judges don't believe in hats. That's okay. That's okay because I lost being me. And I had all these people lined up that want to do video testimonials for me about how I changed their life by my speech. And that's what matters because most of those speakers, I tell people in Toastmasters, don't let Toastmasters ruin you. Make you a robot. Because there's people in Toastmasters for 25, 30 years in my club. And I belong to the oldest club in Ohio. It's 55 years. And they want to be speakers, but they've been there for 25, 30 years. I've only been doing it for two and a half years. Yeah, what's wrong with that? (laughs) Yes, because they're Toastmasters. I tell people to go to Toastmasters because they teach you the mechanics of speaking. You go through their 10 speeches, know your audience, vocal variety. Once you master that, you got to go out on your own. So all these speak, like the girl who uh, beat me to go to the finals for the third time, she wants to do it. She's asking me, how do I get paid, Greg? I said, well, you've been to the finals three times. But what she does is she does the mechanics. She moves her hand swiftly. She does the fake smile. Mm-hmm. She does all this. People don't want that. How I speak, how we speak in Toastmasters and how we get paid to speak are two different ways. Because I shout, I scream, I say, you suck. You can't say things like that in Toastmasters. Toastmasters is proper. And I tell people all the time, those speakers are gone. You know, there's the Les Browns of the world, but, you know, he's 72. The new speakers are people being their self. Yeah, I know. I know. One, of, one of my big mentors is Peter Boog, and, I, he, you know, he will, will absolutely not put a suit jacket on. <laughs> you know, no. it's just and if you, cap every time you see him. Yeah, and, yeah. If, you, if you like it, do that. But it's changed, right? We now watch TV on these little things called smartphones. Mm-hmm. It's not the same as, as the Zig Ziglar's. They're, they're not going to make it anymore. They're yeah. not. But, but now Les Brown, let's talk about him. So I, yes. I saw him speak in September out at Success Live. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, he's incredible. And when I saw you were connected to him. So down the road, I'm going to ask a favor because one of the things we talked about helping other people. One of the things that mm-hmm. I do is I support prostate cancer. The fight okay. against that. That's less out of 21 years. Absolutely. That's in my family. So I'll, okay. I'll be the third generation to, you know, hopefully not get it. But so anyway, when I saw your Facebook profile and I see less of you hanging out, I said, wow. So I called Sean and I said, Sean, you're not going to believe this. He goes, oh yeah. And then I see you wrote the forward to your book. So that's awesome. But the, the one quote that I took, I took about four quotes away from him, but one that really stuck with me is you're going to fail your way to success. That's right. You are going to fail your way to success. And, and then talking about money, he started off and, you know, cause it was a success event. So everybody was there trying to make themselves better. And he says, so what does financial freedom represent to you? And uh, he paused. Yeah, that's right. He paused. He goes, okay, now multiply that by 100. Now you're getting close. And that's it, right. There was, a, there was a like the air let out of the room, but he was putting it in perspective of how life happens. 
That's and, right. You, you know, what is, what is true freedom? So he, he is he is such a powerful speaker. And then when he does his whole DJ gig, which I'm sure you've seen it. At he the, started. His deal with the record station. And it's just so powerful. That's here, that's here in Columbus, Ohio, where he started. Yeah. You know, and, and see, I have the privilege of his mentor, Mike Williams, that he talks about mm-hmm. all the time. He's my mentor, too. He was the guy who told me I should uh, do Toastmasters. So I get to hear from both of them. You know, when he calls and leaves me a voicemail, some, sometimes I like to uh, let people wait. And he'll call me. And he'll say, Greg, it's Les. Give me a call. And it's like the fourth time. And my wife will say, why are you doing it? His daughter is and say, why are you doing it my father? I say, because I just like to know that Les Brown I'm putting him on hold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, just, we were just with him in New York City. He called me. And he said, young man, I hear you're down the road speaking. I said, yes, sir. He said, come on down. Come on down and see me. So we went up to his room, and there he was, you know. And uh, he always hugs me. You know, he, he loves my nieces. They were with me, too. And uh, what's nice was he had all these uh, body uh, guards and uh, uh, security around him. And my niece said, uh, Uncle, it's pretty cool. Uh, Les pushed his people aside and came over and says, I got to take a picture of my two homies. That's right. Cool. Yeah. I said, how did that make you feel? They said, it made us feel great. I said, that's how genuine he is. Yeah, and, and you get that from him even when he's on stage. Which you don't I'm blessed. Me. I'm blessed for him to call me. Um, you know, he yelled at me one time in front of my nieces, but it was a loving yelling because I was taking ten thousand dollars to go speak in Australia. I thought it was great, right? He slammed his hand down. He said, "Don't you ever leave this country for less than twenty five thousand without having a travel fee?" So we figured mine would be. He said, "What he always taught me was, you don't be greedy. You don't need a first class unless you're sick or something." Just take a nice seat. Take someone for uh, uh, two seats, one for your videographer or your manager or whoever it is, and then your hotel. And that's all paid up 30 days before you even leave. Mm -hmm. So he yelled at me in a loving way, and I loved it because now I learn. Now I tell people, okay, I got to have this in my bank account 30 days before I leave. It'd be held in escrow, but I'm not going to do this because he taught me how he was burnt before. You know, you get there, and I said, well, that hasn't happened to me yet, Les. He said it will. You'll get there. Someone's going to promise you $10,000. they are going to say, Mr. Walker, we kind of overspent. So can we give you a, a box of Oreos and 100 bucks? Yeah. Right? I, I, it, you know, it's funny. I go back to, you know, this is podcast episode 27. So the way I got into doing this was when, when I saw Les speak in September, I had not even done my first podcast. And I, I decided in May that I was going to write a book and I've kind of reinvented myself mm-hmm. and go out to success. And that was a last minute thing. I got an opportunity to go and hopped on a plane and went out there. And that was pretty awesome in itself because I have two twins that are two, not quite two years old and, and an older daughter. And, you know, we're sitting at the table Sunday morning after church eating breakfast. And I get this email. And I said, I just got a, an email, got an opportunity to go to this event out in California. She goes, you got to go. This is what, what we want, right? This is what you want. And I said, but it's pretty quick. She goes, when? I said, well, I got to leave Thursday. And then, you know, I went out there and did that. And she held the fort down while I was gone. And, and yeah. that, that single event there for me was, was really a pivot point. I knew I was going to do a podcast. You talk about being in the right place at the right time. Mm-hmm. Sit down in the front row because um, I ended up with somehow my, my ticket got changed. I ended up with a VIP seat. It's, you know, it's just you, you see like the cards yeah. stacking up. So I'm, I'm sitting down front and I sit down next to a guy. And I said, you know, hey, I'm Tim. And yeah, actually, he was one seat over. His wife was in between us. And I don't know how we started talking about it. I said, I'm from Baltimore. He goes, you know Smythe Jewelers? And I said, well, well, yeah, that's where my wife's engagement ring comes from. A matter of fact, that's where my ring comes from. He goes, well, that's where her ring's from. Talk about small world. Well, he has, he's two years into his podcast. So him and I go back and forth. Back and forth. He's now in my mastermind group. But you, you talk about that rise. Well, so I'm 27 episodes into my podcast, and what I've seen is people keep coming back for three things. They they don't know how to message. They don't know how to get a value proposition together. They don't know how to do an elevator pitch. They don't know how to just say what they do. It Mm -hmm. took me 10 years to figure it out. I'm guilty as can be, so I'm I'm really passionate about helping other people take steps to, to get to that point. They're scared to death of video. They're scared to death of hearing their own voice, seeing themselves. That was me. It, it, well, I think everybody goes through it. And I, was vo- I was voted number one motivator on Periscope 2016, spoke at the Periscope Summit. That's where Murray Newland of Forbes magazine found me. Other people found me. 
And until then, I would have never let anybody film me. It was hard. I was sweating on the toilet seat. Well, and, and that's it. <laughs> but, but then the third thing is time management. And that's the three yeah. things that people are scared to death of as entrepreneurs. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to, what, we'll talk about the sweat a little bit. I, I, I finished my book by writing something to the effect of at the end, of, you know, at the end of your journey, which really never ends, but think a few years down the road when you're giving that speech, do you break a sweat or do you expect people just to, to be there for you? And it, it's kind of a, where, where you're at in your life that, that you never really want to get to that point where you expect people to come for you. You always want to be giving forward. And yeah, I, I always want to give. Yeah, and, and it's funny because as you deal with people who are ultra successful in the sense of whatever their definition of success is, they all seem to give back. And, and they do. Back to that. It's, when I have someone who I look up to very highly – and they send me an email or a card and says, Greg, you just inspired me. I'm thinking, really? Me? Inspired you? But I get it all the time. I don't understand it. But like Les always tells me, young man, you don't have to understand it. Just accept it and be thankful. So I do. I don't understand why people say nice things about me that are way above me, I think, in education or financial or happiness, or whatever. I don't. But Les says, just accept it. And I do now. I don't try to understand it. Because I think we try to understand and overthink things too much in life. And we just need to accept it and be who we are. And I tell people, be humble. Be humble, but don't be afraid to hit that button to record. Be humble, but don't be afraid to get out of obscurity and be a P.T. Barnum. Get out there and shout. Get out there and shout that I'm somebody. I'm greatness. I can inspire the world. Because when you do that, people will believe in it. If you don't believe in your product, why should people believe in it? Well, well, that's the big thing is how is somebody going to buy from you if you don't believe in yourself? That's right. But there are so many people out there that don't believe in themselves. And, that, and that's why mindset is so important. It just, it, it, you know, it, and, and I know when we talked initially through the message, that was one of your big things you talk about is mindset. Yeah. I tell people, I have a friend uh, of mine, he doesn't like my tagline, but I believe it. I say, I change lives by changing minds. Why doesn't he like that? he just says that, uh, and, and he's one of my great, he's the guy who got me to hit the button to record uh, on here. And I, I, every time he comes on my live streams, I always tell people he's the reason why I'm not afraid to get in front of a, a TV camera or anything. Right. Right. I think he just thinks it's, it could be like insulting, but I don't because we all needed our mind change, right? That's what changes us is our mindset. What's the difference between the guy who's living on the streets who doesn't believe he can do anything or the guy who grew up very, very wealthy and doesn't achieve nothing. And then there's a, ki- a kid who was called white trash who has 14 siblings. No one's ever been past the ninth grade. And he becomes a millionaire young age, speaks around the world, best-selling book. How does that happen? It's a mindset. So that's my tagline, changing lives by changing minds. Yeah, it's, a, it's 100% because that's, that was me because I lived it. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, so because I lived it, I'm passionate about making sure other people, everybody right. lives it to some degree, but I want to help them live, you know, be more, yeah, I guess, um, what's the best way to say this? Be more intentional with what they do yes. instead of being so random. I and, want people to experience what I've experienced in life, being on yachts, flying on a billionaire's plane, hanging out with a billionaire for nine hours in your, in your Hummer, driving around your subway Hummer, right? I want people to understand what's like, to have one of your best friends be Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal's coach who has 10 NBA rings. I want people to know what it's like to, to, go, to go play some cards with Shaquille O'Neal. I want people to know that. I want them to feel that. And if I can do that coming from my circumstances, why can't everyone else? Well, It's just that I believe it. Because now it matters. Yeah, now it matters. It. N-O-W, no oppor- N-O-W, no opportunity wasted. Yep, absolutely. Someone's, someone's living the dream right now that you thought of five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, someone's, I'm living the dream. I hear people, there's an old guy who my wife, I got mad at my wife uh, years ago because this old guy kept coming in and talking to me and he says, you know, Greg, I could have owned Subways. I could have owned McDonald's. Uh, I could have owned some KFCs. And one day my wife comes in and she says, Mr. Smith, my husband has to stop talking to you. I looked at my life, wife because my wife's very nice. Everyone loves my wife. She says, Greg, he's been coming here for 13 to 15 years, and he's never took that jump. 
I didn't realize that. And after I told him that, he never spoke to me again. Well, there's a new pizza shop to open up that my niece and I go to. And I told my niece, I said, see that old guy over there? Now he's probably in his late 70s, 80s. You know what he was doing, Tim? He was looking at the, the pizza guys making pizzas, and I knew what he was thinking. And he didn't remember me. So we move a little bit closer, and he says, hey, who's the manager and owner here? The guy came out, and he says, you know what? I could open a pizza shop. So he still hadn't done it. Nope, never will. All those years. No. Nope. What could he have done? But he's wanted, and I believe there's a lot more people out there like him, Mr. Smith, who's afraid to take that chance. I love it. I love hugging an old couple. And they said, young man, we had a DQ back in 1969, but it failed. I hugged them. I hugged them like they're Warren Buffett because at least they took that chance and they would never go to their deathbed saying, we could have done it. We could have done it. Right? People think I'm a genius. I'm not a genius. I'm just not afraid to take a risk because I want to live a full life. So when did you make the transition where, or, or did you make a transition where, where people started to come to you? That's, that's a, as you, as people you start, started, hold tight one sec. As you start to take control of your life, do you, do you feel like that is something you always planned or did that just happen? It's kind of a two part question. Well, I, did, uh, when and when and, did you expect it? And then how did you? I never expect, I never expect anything. You know, I got into business when I was very young because I didn't want to work for anybody. And I found a guy who had a, a failing business, a subway, and he asked me to take it over. I took it over, turned into one of the top ones in Ohio at the time. Uh, no one really came to me until I spoke at the Periscope Summit when I joined Toastmasters three years ago. And I told my story. I uh, went to Periscope Summit. I, I rocked it because people used to call me the big dreamer. And I asked my friend, Ruben, Professor Ruben Arana, who wrote for my book, and my wife, Jan, those two people know me the best. And I said, when I go to, to the Periscope Summit, do I become Greg Walker setting down on a panel, or do I become the big dreamer? And both of them said, absolutely, you become the big dreamer. Because Greg is setting down what I can't set when I speak. So all, all five panelists set, and I have pictures of stuff like that, and they gave me the mic. And one lady spoke around the world, and she followed me. So they gave me the mic, and I stood up. And I don't know why, but my wife told me afterwards, she says, dear, there's people on their phone saying, who the hell is this guy, this mofo, blah, blah, blah. And I just became the big dreamer. You know, uh, me, Greg is the quiet guy who sets mm -hmm. down. And then a guy came up, someone said, uh, hey, Greg, there's a guy down there from Forbes magazine doing to a talk to a, a TV station. And he's talking about you. I said, shut up. Other people came up there. I said, shut up. So I went down there, a guy's named Murray, Murray Nillens. And he looking at me and I'm holding my iPhone, right? And he's making a gesture. And someone, one of his people says, Greg, he wants you to film him. I said, oh, so I pulled my phone and he's talking to the TV camera. He says, I'm name is Murray Newland. I speak around the world. I hold panels around the world. And today I heard Greg, the big dreamer speak. And I have, he is the best motivational, inspirational speaker I have ever been on stage with. And I said, wow. I said, you said, why did you say that about it? He said, because Greg, I've never seen anybody like you before. Never. And he did a testimonial for me on my phone. It's on my website. And they said, but Greg, I have a problem with you. I said, did I say something to offend you? He says, the problem I have is you're not on social media. I didn't need social media. I was a millionaire by just opening brick and mortar stores. Right. 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 So he says, he says, Greg, I just spoke in 12 countries in six weeks. A lot of those speaking gigs, you should have been the big dreamer but no one knows who you are. So that's where I got on social media. That's when I got on social media. So I'm looking that's at what people. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes here. <laughs> and I, I missed this on the intro. For those of you that don't know Greg, you're in for a treat just to give you an idea. Here's what Murray Newlands from Forbes said. And I wrote that quote down. That was the yeah. one, the one quote, because that's so powerful. It, it just, uh, oh, it is. It goes and to, goes to show you that, you just, you just got to stand up and like you, said, you, you were yourself or, or the big yeah. dreamer and you, you did, you call it non-conforming, call it whatever you want, but you followed your, your heart and your path. And yeah. Hit you. And every question Murray asked me for some reason lined up with me that I just knew the answer, bam. Mm -hmm. And I just went off with it. And uh, that changed my life. People started saying, Hey, Hey, how much would it cost to come speak here? How much would it cost to speak here? 
And I told her, you know, I said, you know, I don't dress up. At that time, um, I had jeans on because I had a cold. I had a, I wore my tuxedo, I called it. It's an unbuttoned black shirt with my Dream Grind Hustle shirt underneath of it. That's my, that's my tuxedo. Um, but yeah, Murray Newland saw me. People saw me from there. I started speaking. Word of mouth, like Les Brown tells you. Most of his speaking gigs come from referral. That's all money comes from. I don't send out any flyers. I don't send out anything. People hear me speak. And they say, hey, how can we have you come speak at our, at our event? I mean, and then they have people like, uh, like here's something right here I'll read on the back of my book. Greg's story will get you to dr- dream big and achieve bigger in life. His book and story will get you to dream, grind, and hustle your way to success, just like the guys I played with and coached with in the NBA, like Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and a guy I won my first NBA championship with, Wilt Chamberlain. As Greg always says, dream big and see your possibilities. Jim Clemens, 10-time NBA champion, champion at every level, NBA coach player. That's amazing that someone would write that about me. Les Brown calls me the the, the mentor to his grandchildren and children. That's that's phenomenal. And it's all because I stepped up and I, I, I got out of obscurity three years ago by joining Toastmasters and speaking at the Periscope Summit. Just from that event. I didn't want to write a book. I didn't want it. People heard my story and said, you got to write a book. Someone said, Greg, you, uh, I coach TED speakers now, right? Someone told me uh, one time when I, I lost in Las Vegas at the World Championship, they said, Greg, you need to, your story needs to go on bigger stages like TED Talk. I said, Ted, Ted Turner of CNN? I didn't know what a TED Talk was. Now I coach TED speakers. If you go on my Instagram or Facebook Live, you'll see me coaching TED speakers. Me? Me, the kid who didn't even ask his wife 30 years ago to marry her, I gave the ring to her sister and said, ask your old sister to marry me. And I ran went, went into my boy's house. My nieces hate telling that story. <laughs> Les laughs every time. His kids laugh every time they hear that story. Right? People want to pay me to speak. It's all because I stepped out of, got out of obscurity. I stepped into my possibilities three years ago at the Periscope Summit. That's it. Just showing up, stepping out. So let's talk about success. What, when you, when you try to help somebody, how, how do you break success down for somebody so they can, if, if they feel like a failure, if they feel like they're just, you know, not worth their weight in salt, whatever that issue is they have internally that's holding them back from making the decision. Do you, as a rule or, or as a habit, do you define success for them or help them define nope. success for themselves? Success is different. Success for me, listen, I see seven movies a week sometimes. I have my own movie theater. And when I say movie theater, my movie theater is bigger than most people's houses. It's a real movie theater. I have a drive-in movie screen out back on my four acres, right? And I still go to movie. We, we went and saw two movies last night. I, saw, I just put pictures on my Instagram, whatever. I love movies because that's what makes me happy. Because having 14 siblings, we had one TV. And I rarely got to watch TV. That's, that's me being successful. Because to me, being successful is getting up and doing what you want to do in life. Right? I have friends who say, dude, why are, you could make so much money. You're absolutely right. My wife and I leave a lot of money on the table because we live our life. My daughter is going to turn 30 years old. She has asked me to come with her to help her pick out her wedding dress. Because every day from preschool to the time she went to college, her daddy took her to school and picked her up. From preschool to college, I made a choice to be there for my daughter. My nieces, when they're out of school, where as soon as I get done with this, me and my nieces are going to a movie. We're going to another movie. So success, you have to define what success. I have a buddy who smokes $110 cigars and likes to drink $1,800 bottle of scotch that's his happiness out on his patio. It's not happiness for me. So I tell people, what makes you happy? Do you like bowling? Do you like fishing? Do you like working eight days a week? You have to ask yourself and define success for me. But success for me is doing what I want to do with who I want to do it with as much as I want to do it. Anytime I want it. That's my success. I have a buddy who is not successful unless he makes 3 million a year. And I'm not kidding. He, he wants to put a gun in his mouth sometimes. He's just too afraid to pull the trigger, but he really doesn't think he's a success. So I tell people, what, what makes you happy? What really makes you happy? And then try to get paid to do that. Well, see, I'm glad you say that because 
That, I, to me, you know, the, the people that I, I talk with on a daily basis and then people that, like you said, you know, go back to the, the pizza shop story, you know, the people that are never going to make that move, whether it's a life move or a business move, whatever it is, it's kind of all the same thing. I, I feel like people get hung up on what they, they really don't understand what success really means. Just yeah. like they don't understand what wealth really means. Mm-hmm. And they, they get hung up on, call it the, the shiny object syndrome or whatever you want to call it, where they, they see something that maybe in their life or with their abilities or their situation, whatever it is, it, it's not necessarily attainable. And it's not attainable for two reasons. One, because it's not. And number two, because they won't go get it. And they spend their whole life looking from afar. And like you said, at the end of their life, what do they have? Nothing. Right. You, you want to get two different answers on success? Ask someone who lives on Fifth Avenue in New York and ask someone who lives in Bangladesh when the poorest country is on earth. Ask them. You'll get two different. The person in Bangladesh who's eating rice and beans would tell you, we would just like to have silverware. The guy or girl on Fifth Avenue would say, I got to have the Rolls Royce, not the Bentley. Yep. So success is different things. And why is it at the end of, at the end of most people's lives, they don't think about money, do they? They don't think about money. They don't think about cars. They think, you know, when David Cassidy, you know, of the Partridge family, the famous show, when he died, he told his 30 year old daughter, who's a famous actress. Now they had no relationship. He looked at her and says, and she says, last word was so much wasted time. See, all he wanted to do was perform and stuff, and he didn't know his daughter. Had no relationship with his 30-year-old daughter. And she was there for his, by his side when he was dying. So I tell people, don't get so caught up. Okay, yeah, you can criticize me because I only have an 8,000-square-foot house, right? Right? They only have 18 TVs. That could have more. But I keep going to movies. I keep spending time with my wife and my daughter and my nieces. That's okay. You can have more. My daughter once asked me, Daddy, the Joneses, what do you do about the Joneses that they talk about? I said, you let the Joneses win. Let my friend have four homes. We only have one. Let them have that. But I get to spend every single day with you. Mm-hmm. That's my success. That is. And you got to define it for what makes you happy. Right? Yep. But, I know, but I know in the end, when I almost lost my life, I only lost 51% of my foot. I saw all the people who wanted to come here from California to Columbus, Ohio, to come be by my side. Les Brown's daughter, Serena, came and spent time with me, took time out of her busy schedule. See, it's not about the money. It's not. I tell people, my wife and I, we always believed in impact before income. We didn't want to make a million dollars. We wanted to feed a million people. We wanted to make a million dollars to give it away. So many people now want to make a million dollars, then give something away. And I tell people, Don't fall into that trap of the big lie that I will do this when I, I will give when I, if you cannot give five bucks to help someone buy a diet drink or a cup of coffee, when you make $20,000 a year, you will never give $10,000 check away. It's a lie. You got to do it right now. As I say, NOW, no opportunity ways to do everything you want to do in your life. So define success, how you want it. I don't live by other people's lives. I don't, I live how my wife and I want to live. That makes us happy. As long as my wife's happy at the end of the day, my nieces, my daughter, I'm happy. Yep, and I think if a lot, a lot of people could do that, it would be a much happier world. Well, look at Robin Williams, right? If money and fame brought happiness, why did he put a rope around his neck? He made everyone else happy but himself. No self-fulfillment. That's why I'm the only one out of 15 that's never touched alcohol or drugs in my life. Never, because I'm happy with who I am. I let other people, you know, one of my buddies says, dude, would you really drive in your wife's van, sporting that new van? Yes, sir. He said, but you don't look right. Not in your Hummer, not in your sports cars. I said, why? It's a $40,000 car paid for, has air conditioning, has 12 speaker sound system. What's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. See, he can't get over that, that thing, not driving a Porsche, right? And that's why his wife just left him. He's lonely, but he, he thinks he wants to be happy because what he wants other people right? He thinks he should be happy by other people's. He's not happy unless someone sees him driving a Porsche, right? Even though he can't even pay his mortgage payment. Right. I say, listen, I'm happy driving my niece's bike down the road. 
because I make Greg Walker, the big dreamer happy. I don't, I don't try to make other people happy. I make me happy because when I'm happy, my wife's happy. My best friends, those fourth grade. When I'm happy, my friends, my, my colleagues are happy. The people I speak to are happy. So I have to tell people, you have to make yourself happy or you'll end up being Chris Farley, abusing drugs, John Belushi, Elvis Presley, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Jack, uh, Joplin, and now Robin Williams. Yeah, and there's, there's plumbers, there's plumbers, carpenters, business people that are doing the same thing. It's just, they're not out in the, uh, the public eye. Yep, so I tell go. people, make yourself happy. Do what you want to do. Stop worrying about what your neighbors think. Let the Joneses win. Yeah. I, but, and, and I think it comes back to um, that word perspective. It, it really yeah. does. That, that's such it a does. Nice word. And it's funny because that's not a word I use a lot in my team. I don't either. But, but it really, it does hit home. I'll probably start using it more now. <laughs> yeah, I keep everything simple in my life. Yep. People ask me how to become a millionaire. I keep it simple. You know, people ask me how did I become a speaker? I keep it simple. I don't try to overthink everything. I just go out and do whatever I want to do now. And that's, you know, most people keep saying, you know, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. You know? Well, well this was awesome. I mean, I'm so glad you came on. I, no, thank you, brother. And it was, it was good not to have a real script and just to go through this and talk. Have yeah, a I don't like, I don't like, if you ever hear me speak, you'll see, I don't, I might have something like notes, but then I just go off. I, I'll forget it and go off, you know. I'll see a kid drinking uh, uh, a Coca-Cola, you know, and he's 500 pounds and I'll get off, I'll get off my subject and go on why he shouldn't do that. Yeah. Well, I'll not, not aspire. yeah, yeah that, that's point. what I want. And I think that's what people want now. They don't want, they don't want to see the, um, remember the glamour shot. Not, how old are you, Tim? I am 43. Okay. So you know about the glamour shots of like nineties yeah. and you know, those women, you see that woman and, you say she thinks she looks like Janet Jackson, but in, re- in reality, she looks like Freddie Jackson. Yeah. Right. Cause it was all, people don't want that made up now. They want to see people who are real. They want to see people that are exactly like them. That's why my story gets heard all around the world. Cause people want to say, wow, if that dude came from his environment can make it, then maybe I can too. People want to see that you're just like them, that they're not the only person on the Island. It has the problem. So that's what I've learned that people want authentic people. Yeah. hundred percent. Right? And that, that's why live is taken off because you know, you, that's right. You, there's, there's no chance. You can't go back and say, I want to do over. You, you well, know. You know, we, I watched a guy on Periscope. He was doing his own weather channel. And uh, this is why regular TV is going to die. You can never see a guy on NBC, ABC or CBS as a, you can never see Al Roker, right? Say, it's 100 degrees below zero in North Dakota. Who in the hell would want to live there, right? They, right? He couldn't say that, but this guy says that. Right. So he has 3,000 people on his channel. So now all he has to do is figure out how can I make money off those 3,000? Because people like that. When, when, he says, when he says, wow, he says, can you imagine the bikinis you're seeing in Rio, Rio de Janeiro right now? He couldn't say that on regular TV. So that's why live streaming is going to change how we watch TV. Now, there's some bad things in there. Oh, sure. you know, like when I, when, I, when I see these uh, um, two black guys saying every white baby should die in America, yes, that's where we need censorship right there. We do need that. Um, but, yeah, live streaming, and think it, all those people have to do is hit the button like me. I'll tell you how I hit the button. I wanted to do Periscope because I didn't know anything, but I knew that so bad that I was in my uh, bathroom. And just sitting there, right? So my daughter, my bright daughter comes along and she comes and says, Dad, I need to use your phone. And I said, why? She says, I just need to use your phone. And she comes back in and she says, there you go, Dad, you're live. I'm sitting with the toilet seat down, sitting there. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, she says, you're live. And I look and I see people like, it's like, hey, hey, big dreamer. Hey, who are you? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how do I get this off? <laughs> and she says, Dad, you make people look at you every single day. What's the difference? They're going to laugh at you whether they want to laugh at you or not. What's the difference? And now I, I, I do, I'm not afraid to do it anymore. I was voted number one motivator on Periscope. Now, I told Les one time, I said, you know, Les, I was voted number one motivator on Periscope. I said, you know why? He said, why? I said, because you weren't nominated. <laughs> yeah. And he said, no, young man, you take that. You take whatever you can get because Les Brown wasn't on it. They voted you the big dreamer out of how many people. Um, so I, I do take that. But I don't care what people think anymore. Not, not in a good way, but I don't care what the haters think. You know, I, I really don't because as my wife always told me, and she's one who convinced me after years, 
She says, dear, if they don't send those on vacation, they don't pay our bills, they don't take care of your brother and sister's kids, why should they matter? Because you're never going to please any, everybody. No, you're if, you not. Do, if you do, you're conforming and not leading. That's right. It's I don't like, conform. I, I, I speak. I live my life. And if someone doesn't like me, I'm sorry. Yep. I'm sorry. It's your, it's your loss. If you don't like the big dreamer, it's your, it's your loss. <laughs> I'm going to be conceited like that. Right? It's your yeah. loss. So, so how, does, how do my listeners get a hold of you? How do they, where uh, do they find your book? They can get my book at Barnes & Noble but they'll pay $35 for the hard copy or Amazon. But if they want to, if they want a signed copy, they can get it for $19.99 on greginspires.com. So greginspires.com, they can get a signed autographed copy. All right. And they can follow me on Instagram at Greg Inspires, Twitter at Greg Inspires, and they can find me on Facebook at Dream Grind Hustle. Because those are the three, those are the three keys. I, I don't think you need an education. I think you need to have a dream, a daily grind, and a daily hustle to make it in this world. That's all I've ever had was a dream, a grind, and a hustle. So that's my Facebook. So if they go to Greg Inspires with an S dot com, you pick up my book. You'll hear what Les Brown said about me, Michael Jordan's coach, Murray Newlands of Forbes, Professor Ruben Arana at Florida A&M University, and Mike Frank, the past president of the National Speakers association. I don't know why they say good things about me, but I accept it as Les Brown says. Sounds good. So, so hang out for a minute. I'm going to go through a couple things. So uh, 10 factor kicking off 2018 here. Um, as I've been talking to you for the last couple of weeks, we are doing um, a, a 10 factor personal assessment. It's kind of a, it's a no brainer. You go through mm-hmm. the, the nine keys to business success and it, it follows right in line with my book. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get your year kicked off strong. So you get a session with me and you get done with that session and you'll know where you stack up in each one of those nine categories and how to prioritize and what to do, what to do first, second, third, and right on down the line, which is, which is your first step to building major momentum. Uh, Podcast is going to continue along. I'm going to bring in great guests throughout the year. And I'm so happy that Greg was on today. What a, what a great year to, what a great way to kick off the year with uh, the motivation because, you know, um, my theme this year is going to be the best year ever. And everybody that's tied in with me, um, making sure they have their best year ever as well. Greg's beating me up about getting my book out. Yes, it will be out soon. It's uh, we're, we're like this close. So stay tuned with that. And then uh, look for me on Facebook live. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm trying to go on twice a week now and, and train. So that, that's just a, it's a natural thing for me. I enjoy doing it. I'm hoping I'm giving you lots of value. And what we do is I try to pick from the feedback I get things that you're asking for. I'm turning around and I'm training you once. Like that's why we did the value proposition on Friday because people are asking, I'm going to do a video training. We're going to come, come right behind it with, with lots of value. Don't miss them. If you miss the episode live, go ahead and Get the replay. I don't take them down. I leave them there. They're they're raw. They're uncut. We mess up. We make mistakes. But at the end of the day, if you get the value, that's what I'm here for. And I've, I'm doing some webinars, kicking off the year too. And stay tuned for those. I'll either hit you through the email list or through social media as well. And other than that, uh, we'll we'll sum everything up on the show notes. So go to the ten factor dot com, and I'll make sure I put all of Greg's contact information there. So if you want to reach out to him. Uh, do it. Definitely buy his book. And, and I think you caught the little hint there. Go to greginspires.com, save some money and get the signed copy. How can you go wrong with that? So Greg, maybe we'll get you back sometime soon and continue our conversation. I think you and I could talk on and on and on for hours. Anytime brother. And also I do one-on-one coaching. Um, I have clients now and uh, I'm doing a special. Normally, normally I charge $3,500 for one hour a week for four weeks when I'm running a special before the, until the end of the year, uh, my coaching is only nine ninety seven till the first of the year. Good deal. Awesome. So let's do it. This episode will, uh, we'll kick off 2018 with the bang until next time, Tim Michael, the 10 factor signing off.